uh, a while back, I did an episode of Mysterious World about Leo Taxel. And if you don't want to know the story of Leo Taxel, pause this video right now and go listen to the Leo Taxel episode of Jimmy Akin's <laughs> Mysterious World. But I'm going to spoil what it is. Okay. So there's this French freethinker. His name is Leo Taxel. That's his pen name. He wrote books under that name. And he was very critical of the Catholic Church. He would make fun of it. He wrote books with titles. This is in the late 1800s. He wrote titles, uh, books with titles like Leo XIII, Poisoner. So he's accusing the currently reigning pope of poisoning people, mm -hmm. you know, murdering them. Um, he had a book called The Amusing Bible, um, where he's got uh, a picture of God sitting on his throne in heaven, and these angels are sitting around him and worshiping him and praising him, and God is just, because <laughs> he's so bored right. with what the angels are doing. He's got another picture of God as a man with a long white beard, and he's got a pipe, and he's lighting a strike anywhere match on the seat of his pants, okay. and it's titled "Let There Be Light." Uh -huh. And so he's he's making fun of the Bible and of Christian stuff. Yeah, and he's very venomously anti-Catholic. He's a French freethinker, and then he converts, and he becomes Catholic, and he's very sincere about it all. And he go he like confesses his sins for three days, mm. and and he renounces his previous positions. Um, and the French Freethinker Society kicks him out as a traitor and even shows up to the meeting and says, guys, I'm sincere. I'm not trying to be a traitor. I'm being sincere. They kick him out and brand him a traitor anyway. And he starts as part of his penance to write books in favor of the church. And particularly because he'd spent time as a Freemason, he starts writing books about Freemasonry and exposing them. Now, at this point in... Um, in the in the 19th century, the, the, the Jesuit magazine Civilta Cattolica, which is kind of a of, quasi-official Vatican organ, is publishing all of these books about or all these articles about Freemasonry and uh, talking about how it's ultimately in league with Satan. It's serving the devil's purposes. Um, and Pope Leo the Thirteenth <clears throat> has written a, an encyclical called. Um, Humanum Familia, something like that, the human family, in which he talks about how humans are basically divided up into those who are serving God and those who are serving the devil, whether they know it or not, mm -hmm. including the Freemasons. <laughs> and um, and so Leo Taxel starts writing books exposing Masonic rites, and he he's concurring with this narrative that um, that uh, that Civilta Catholica has put out. Um, about them being kind of covertly satanic. They're not like openly worshiping the devil, but Taxel confirms he, he publishes their rites, um, you know, the, that they perform, and he'll say things like the grand architect of the universe, which is the Masonic term for God, that's really a code word for the devil. Mm -hmm. And um, so even if individual Masons aren't aware of it, they're really worshiping the devil. And and then there was confirmation for various things that Leo Taxel said. A lot, <clears throat> a lot of uh, the rites that he published, and saying you know here's a Masonic ritual, um, had been published by others. You know because one of the things that the the Freemasons found out is if you want to be a secret society, don't expect your rituals to say secret because people are going to die and their relatives who are not Freemasons are going to have your ritual books and they're going to sell them. So you can walk into a used bookstore anywhere and buy books of Masonic rituals that used to belong to some Mason, but mm -hmm. then he died and his family sold the book. So they're, they, these days, the Masons describe themselves not as a secret society, but a society with secrets which are actually all publicly known anyway. <laughs> yeah. um, now, this is not to say Masons haven't done bad things. They have. But, so Leo Taxel is writing his books and exposing these Masonic secrets, and they're confirmed by other people who have found their ritual books too and have published extracts from them. So a lot of this is being confirmed. Then Leo Taxel writes another book called The Devil in the 19th Century, if I'm having, if that's the correct title of this particular book. Mm -hmm. And what he describes is, a, um, is another Masonic group known as the, uh, it's like the New Paladist Revised Order. Is it called The Devil You Don't Know? Satan, 
the Satan of the nineteenth century? No, that doesn't. I, okay. Doesn't, doesn't sound doesn't ring a bell, okay. but anyway, he writes about this new group and he says they're they're based in Charleston, South Carolina. Um, they were oh, yeah. the they devil were, in the ninth century. You were right. Yeah, they're they're created by um, oh, and I'm blanking on his name now. General, <sighs> he was born in Boston, Massachusetts, but he moved to Arkansas and became a Confederate general. And I'm blanking on his name. Anyway, they were founded by him. He's a very huge figure in the history of Freemasonry. And they, unlike other groups of Masons, openly worship Satan. Okay. They're not using code words. Yeah. They're worshiping Satan in a direct and explicit way. And he he and they've got branches all over the world in different different countries. Um, they also he also names certain figures that are prominent in them, like a woman named uh, Sophia Sappho. Um, Sappho wasn't her literal last name. He did reveal her literal last name. It started with W. It's something like Waldron or Walters or something like that. And another woman named Diana Vaughn, who were kind of rivals for the leadership after General Pike, after General Pike died. Mm -hmm. Um, And so you got this uh, mixed lodge, what's known as an adoption lodge, meaning it has both men and women. And it's openly, openly satanic. And it's got branches in various parts of the world. So this is Taxel's new claim, and it too gets verified because you have um, a, a, a medical doctor named Dr. Batile. That was a pen name to protect his identity, who was like a ship's surgeon that had traveled all around the world. And he was a devout Catholic, and he met people like in India who were members of this paladist order. And he decided to, as a devout Catholic, he wanted to investigate it. So he started investigating it. And he had some code words from other Masonic groups that, like, he'd read about in the literature. And he was able to convince the paladists that he was a fellow Mason. And mm-hmm. he got them to show him various things. Um, some of them were very interesting. One of them is the uh, the first woman I mentioned, Sophia Sappho. <clears throat> She was destined to become the grandmother of the Antichrist, who was going to be born in 1962, which means that today the Antichrist would be about 60, about the about the age that world leaders are coming into the prime of their world-leading career. Um, also, uh, Dr. Batile uh, went to headquarters in Charleston, South Carolina, and got to see the inside of their headquarters. And he was very careful to distinguish between things he had seen with his own eyes and things he had only heard about. So one of the things he saw with his own eyes, and this is the late 1800s, so telephones were a thing now. Mm -hmm. Um, Well, in the headquarters at South Carolina, he found that they had this device that they called an Arcula Mystica, which is Latin for mystical chest, you know, a box. And when you open it, it looked kind of like a drinks cabinet, Mm -hmm. but when you open it up, there was a silver toad inside and seven small golden statuettes. And for the seven different centers where the paladists were operating in other countries, like in India and the and Gibraltar and places like that. And so what General Pike could do when he wanted to talk to one of the other paladist leaders is he would go open up the Arcula Mystica, um, press the golden statue, cor- statuette corresponding to the Paladis Center he wanted to talk to. And then over there at that center, the Silver Toad would spout flames to, t- to tell them that there's an incoming call what? from headquarters. So and cool. I know. It's great. It's like a supervillain telephone, right? <laughs> I wish right? we had something like this in the church. I hope stuff like that's going on in the Vatican. <laughs> yeah. Just so, in a non-demonic way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But so uh, so Dr. Bataille saw the Arcula Mystica with his own eyes, but he was careful to distinguish it from other things that the paladists would tell him. Like they would say, you know, we have this ritual every Friday and the devil visibly manifests in it. Mm. Well, he didn't see the ritual for himself, so he didn't see the devil manifest. But he, you know, it, this is something maybe the devil convinced them the devil was manifesting, or this was a rumor about what went on at that ritual, but he didn't see it. So he didn't sign off on that, but he did record it as this is what many paladists believe. Okay. So he is confirming, um, what, uh, what Leo Taxel has written about the paladists. And then 
another figure comes forward, and it's one of the paladists themselves. It's Diana Vaughn. Mm -hmm. uh, who is one of the rival leaders for control of the organization after General Albert Pike dies. She and Sophia Sappho were, um, were rivals to become the new leader. And, and she comes forward. She gives an interview. She lets photos be taken of her. They're published in the French press. And she acknowledges, yeah, I'm, open. I'm a Satanist. I'm a member of this Paladist Rite, um, and, and so forth. So you have all this confirmation. But there are some questions. Now, the other Masons had begun, as soon as this Paladist stuff started coming out in the press, they'd begun to say, this is not a real order. This is not an actual Masonic order. This is a hoax. This is a hoax by the Catholic Church to try oh. to make us Masons look bad. Okay? And so they denied it. But the thing is... The Paladist Order, if the claims about it are true, was this secret society. So a lot of Masons wouldn't have known about it mm -hmm. anyway. Mm -hmm. And you, and so the fact they said, I've never heard of this thing, isn't really evidence that it doesn't exist because it's supposed to be a secret society that's Masonic. Um, but there were also, after a certain point, some Catholics that started raising a question about... Is this real? Is Diana Vaughn even a real person? I mean, mm. she gave interviews and she had her... People would get letters from her. They'd write her and tell her like they're praying for her. And she'd send them a polite note with Masonic symbols on it and back, <laughs> okay. you know. Um, and uh, <clears throat> and so, uh, so she was interacting with people. Um, but there's still a question about is she even real? Well, then she... Now, she starts publishing a magazine... And the magazine is devoted to um, to spreading her paladist principles, you know, so they're kind of coming out of the closet and they're not being as secret about their organization anymore. Well, then she also she's getting all these letters from people praying for her conversion and she converts too, and she. She 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 becomes a devout Catholic. She writes a devotional book hmm. of um, uh, it's like a it's like a forty day prayer book for you know uh, for prayers to Jesus and so forth. It's kind of like a forty day novena, mm -hmm. um, and she is corresponding with Pope Leo the Thirteenth. And she's getting, you know, letters back from his private secretary and from his uh, from his cardinals and the head of then it was called the Holy Office. It was later the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith. The head of the Holy Office is is like signing off on the authenticity of her conversion. And and she's getting written up in Chivilta Catholica. It's talking about all the great work she's doing to expose uh the satanic forms of Freemasonry, and she's getting letters saying, you know, praise God for the work you're doing, keep on doing it. No doubt the Lord allowed you to remain within this organization for so long, yeah. only to bring you out of it so that you can better expose it now. And and so she's getting all this positive feedback, but there are some people now even in the church who are starting to raise questions about, is this accurate? One of them was the Bishop of Charleston, South Carolina. He made a private trip over to Rome to talk to Pope Leo the Thirteenth okay. about the paladists that were supposedly based in his diocese, in his city, in Charleston, and he went and he. The only reason we know about this is he gave an interview while he was on the way there, um, and he said that I'm going to tell the Pope that there's no truth to this. That the I I know the leading Masons in Charleston, and they are not Satanists; they are devout Protestants. Huh. I've been in their headquarters in Charleston, and the rooms that are described by Doctor Bataille don't exist. There is no Arcula Mystica supervillain telephone there. Bama. And so, what about the Sheila who said she converted and was writing letters to the Pope's well, secretary? We'll, we'll, we'll get, get there. there. All right. Um, so, so then the question was, well, after he gave this interview, how did Diana Vaughn react? And she said, he's covering it up. He's a Mason. Ah. So she accused <laughs> the Bishop of Charleston of being a Mason. Wow. And she had all these supporters, you know, she's got these letters from the Pope's private secretary and from the head of the CDF yeah. and all this is Chivilta Catholica's writing about how great she is. But there's enough question now 
that there's a demand for her to come forward in public again. Yeah. Like, the, where is she supposed to be in a monastery right now? Where is it? Who were her godparents? Right. You know, things like that. And Leo Taxel pointed out at a public conference discussing this that we can't just announce all that stuff because it'll attract Masonic assassins. Huh. So, you know, we have to keep some of this information private. But what we can do is we'll give a talk. Uh, we'll have an evening where she will come forward and take the public risk of being assassinated. I'll talk first, um, giving you uh, my own history, and then she'll get up and give a talk on paladism destroyed, you know, because of her exposés of it. And so you'll all be able to see her. You can talk for hear her talk for yourself, make your own judgments, ask her questions in the question period, and so forth. So they to make sure they get a good audience for this, they actually give away a typewriter. They have a raffle mm. for one of those newfangled typewriters mm -hmm. that um, that was donated by Diana Vaughn, who had been writing to people mm -hmm. on typewriters. Um, so, uh, and this was a big deal. Mark Twain had a typewriter that he was, He's he, sometimes you should read Mark Twain's plea to the typewriter company letter, please don't let people know I'm using a typewriter because I hate it. They published his letter. <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> But uh, but anyway, so they get this big crowd there, and they've invited the public. They've in, there are masons there, there are Catholics there, there are priests there, um, wow. and so um, so Taxel gets up, mm -hmm. and he says, "I want to assure everybody of my goodwill. I know I've been I've been kind of mocked in the press, um, but uh, but I bear no ill will to anybody. I have loved my time in the church. I'm very tw tranquil, and." My conversion was not sincere. Mm. I have never been a sincere Catholic. I joined as a prank. And mm. it's been 12 years now, and I didn't tell anyone, including the freethinkers who kicked me out of their society, mm. and I didn't tell my wife. She thought I was having a nervous breakdown. But just for fun, I did this huge prank. Mm. I invented the paladist. Dr. Bataille is a guy I hired to, who had traveled the world as a ship surgeon. I wanted him to give local color to the stories I was writing on his behalf. Wow. Diana Vaughn, she's not a Protestant. She's, she's not a Catholic. She's from a Protestant family. And she is another woman I hired. Oh uh, she's actually gosh. a free thinker herself. And she wouldn't accept money I was going to give her because she thought this was such a fun prank. She's getting to correspond with the Pope's private secretary and the head of the CDF. She's, she was just having a grand old time with all this. And we did this not to be mean-spirited, but just for fun. And so you can all appreciate it. Even you Catholic priests and cardinals <sighs> can have a, have a shared laugh with us yeah, no. at all of this. And it was regarded by the press as not the best way he could have made this announcement. But what this shows for our purposes uh -huh. is you don't just accept claims about so-and-so is a Mason or Masons are satanic or Masons have this colossal conspiracy against us because it turns out all of the stuff that Leo Taxel said that was not confirmed by other printed sources was just his his fantasy. He was doing it as a hoax. And look at what happened to the Bishop of Charleston, South Carolina. He went to the Vatican yeah. to tell Pope Leo. That, and by the way, Pope Leo had told Leo Taxel what a fan he was of his work. He'd read all of Leo Taxel's books and pamphlets. So we're hoaxing Chivilta Catholica and apparently Leo the Thirteenth bought into all this. Because it fit yeah. the narrative right. that had been spun about the Masons in conservative Catholic circles. Got and you. they just accepted this material that sounded like it confirmed the narrative. It was juicy. Yeah. It was exciting. There was intrigue. It was shocking. Yeah. It was. It scratched exactly where the conspiracists wanted to itch. And they just accepted it without critical thinking and without insisting on proof. Hey, thank you so much for watching. Before you go, do us a favor, leave a comment, let us know what you thought of the video, like, and subscribe.